Jason Tatum has scored the most points by a Celtic in the first three games of a season ever. After battling through a shoulder injury in last year's NBA Finals, where Boston came up two wins short of securing championship number 18, now Tatum's 100% and also better than he's ever been in 2022-23. Tatum welcomed Paolo Boncaro to the association on Saturday night, and while Boncaro's held his own, having become the first number one pick since 1968 to score 20 plus points in his first three games, Jason Tatum more than doubled up the rookie in field goals made while attempting just two more shots than Boncaro. The rookie was held to 6 for 19 shooting from the field thanks to Tatum's defense. Jason's 40 piece came on a ridiculous 81% true shooting. He grabbed eight boards, blocked two shots, dished out an assist, and snatched a steal. He made 14 of his 21 field goals and four of his 10 three pointers. You're going to find out exactly how he did that against a maturing, yet still tough to beat Orlando team that's going to be a contending squad later on this decade. Here's why Jason Tatum is insane for this. Before continuing, just 9.5% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. Follow at Hoops for NBA edits on Instagram. Same handle goes for my Twitter. Thank you so much for supporting this platform. With all the flack Tatum's received after leading the Celtics in points, dimes, and steals per night in the 2022 postseason, the NBA media has evidently set incredibly high expectations for this man. There's no such thing as an inconsistent superstar, and while Tatum may have struggled to be consistent at times throughout the 2022 playoffs while dealing with that aforementioned shoulder injury, now Tatum's fully healthy. Give credit to Andrew Wiggins for holding Jason to a below average 36.7% shooting clip in the NBA Finals, but so far this season, Tatum showing that he put in reps during the offseason with his current on-court production and leadership-wise, his tunnel vision mentality of getting back to the Finals is very clear, as Tatum spoke on that by saying, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more times, that all I'm concerned about is getting back to the championship and getting over that hump end quote. Michael Jordan wouldn't have become the greatest of all time if he didn't use what the bad boy Pistons did to him in the late 80s as fuel to his fire. LeBron James wouldn't be in the same sentence as MJ if he didn't use what the 2007 San Antonio Spurs did to him as fuel to his fire. Speaking of that, you probably know this, but LeBron related that 07 finals performance to Jason's against Golden State. As James said, he had a hell of a season, and that guy's not even 25, he'll be back, he's got nothing to hang his head about, he played against the same team as my first finals, I played against the Spurs, it's the same shit. LeBron's got a damn good point, because his numbers against San Antonio 15 years ago are nearly identical to Jason's against the Warriors this past June. It's actually scary how similar the numbers are between these two in those respective matchups. Does that mean Tatum's going to be the next LeBron? That's neither here nor there. But the fact the numbers are identical does tell us that we can't overreact to a bad stretch of games, something we're seeing being proven to us in Jason's first few performances of 2022-23. As of this recording, Tatum's averaging just under 35 points per game, he's made 58.7% of his 61 total shot attempts, and while he's made just 33% of his shots from beyond the arc, Considering his career efficiency is 5 percentage points higher than that, this may allow Jason's scoring to potentially increase. Tatum's shockingly nifty at scoring the basketball off the dribble for a guy who's 6 foot 8 inches tall. For any sized player for that matter, but his frame just makes him even scarier. That craftiness absolutely torched the less experienced Orlando Magic. Jason's patient mastery to create offense individually whether working on or off the ball, is a sight to behold. Using the Vonley empty side down screen, despite Carter Jr. being just a few feet away, Tatum's smooth one-two step as he receives the catch and slight lean back to create space for a jumper with his near nine foot inch release point gets him just enough space. Closing out to contest and force Franz Wagner into the miss, he gets the outlet from Smart, and even though he's in transition, he patiently upfakes and drives into his jab step to shed Cole Anthony. Here, Tatum gets the switch, but is forced to pick up the dribble, and therefore dumps it off to Derek White. But instead of demanding the ball back and staying in the same place, 
Instead, he catches Carter Jr. napping, savvily cutting off the ball to the weak side left wing. Wagner is again bothered by the presence of Tatum, this time on the inside. Then Jason grabs the board and makes a coast-to-coast -coast attack look easy with his mix of ball handling, length, speed, and grace. Again, a Noah Vonley pick, this time on an off-ball drag screen, gets Tatum an easy transition three. Blake Griffin's flare screen is followed by an up fake, and watch the footwork to explode out of that up fake and embrace the contact for the and one. Tatum's reach and anticipation make him an excellent help defender, as he shows off when Mo Bamba fails to space out the floor, and Tatum helps off him for the poke away. He's also stellar at locking up isolations on the ball, as he doesn't fall for Boncaro's slight hesitation here, forces the offhanded drive, and funnels Paolo into the help of Grant Williams, then strips the rookie, which gains Boston possession. Back to the offense, though. And last postseason, I wanted to see Tatum in more sets where he was acting as the big man. Here, he's acting as just that in Coach Joe Mozula's system as he slips the on-ball screen and pops out to the three-point line. And slow-reacting big man simply won't have a chance at contesting these shots. But in the second half, Orlando stuck to their game plan and switched easily instead of having their on-ball defenders try to fight through ball screens. Tatum continued to make Wendell Carter Jr. pay as a saucy in-and-out dribble leading to a momentum crossover Hezzy gets Jason the first step to his left. Running the same off-ball drag screen action as they did in the first half with the defense expecting another jumper, this time Tatum attacks Carter Jr. downhill, bodies him off in the lane, and spins around for the acrobatic finish. This baseline Smitty dribble leaves Moncaro in the dust and leads to a Kodak moment for Terrence Ross. Here, Tatum gets Boncaro isolated in the post and fakes the turnaround to his left as he catches it, then dribbles to his right for a smooth top of the key fade. Another number one pick ISO sees Tatum this time whip out an inverted jab step after a pump and leave Boncaro in the dust with a blow by. After the slip and pop from Smart, a momentum cross and strong spin move could have got him a contested look, but instead Tatum notices Wagner sagging off White and finds Derek, who takes advantage of the open space. Whether you have experience or not, Terrence Ross learned the hard way that you get exposed either way when matching up with the shot creation sensation, as one combination and step back get Tatum enough space, with Ross having to respect Jason's drive and slightly backing off. Tatum's defense gets severely overlooked, which we could break down in a separate upload, but what's your favorite move in Jason's bag offensively? Two shoutouts from my last video and this one in my next upload. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.